Raiders are reported to be one of the two teams that is trying to aggressively trade up the draft board into the top three to get their quarterback of the future. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast from March 29th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. As always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, appreciate it. Show has grown in a major way, over 13,000 subscriptions on YouTube already, and that happened pretty quick. So big ups to you, Raider Nation. Big ups to my man, Ari. Ari does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube looking good and sounding good. So we appreciate him. You can check him out on Twitter, at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well, at your boy Q254. And we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Your calls and texts will come up in segment number three. A lot of good conversation, a lot of good comments on quarterbacks, what the Raiders should do. And, of course, uh, there could be a time when you're like, man, I'm quarterback fatigued, but that's what it's going to be. Right, The draft is coming up April 25th. We all know that there's a need and a desire for the Raiders to get their franchise quarterback. Who is going to be that guy? Uh, we know that they've got Gardner Minshew. We know they've got Aiden O'Connell. Who is other? Who else is going to be added to the room? So it's going to be a lot of quarterback conversation between now and the start of the draft, but that's kind of what it is. Those calls and texts will come up in segment number three. Speaking of quarterback talk, segment number two, Dan Graziano from ESPN was on SportsCenter on Thursday talking about two teams that are aggressively trying to uh, make their way up the draft board, trying to trade up into the top three to go get their quarterback of the future, the Raiders being one of them. You'll hear from Graz in segment number two, and then I'll talk about why I believe the Raiders need to make that happen sooner rather than later. I'll explain all of that in segment number two. Here in segment number one, just news and notes of the day, a little bit of a roundup like I always do, and we'll jump right into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. Off top, two big-time uh, pro days were on Thursday, both North Carolina and Washington. Two quarterbacks in Drake May and Michael Penix, who expect to hear their names called early on April 25th. Of course, Drake May will probably hear his name called in the top four or five. Uh, Michael Penix will probably hear his name called, well, sounds like in the top 32. You know, potentially a first-round guy. Uh, there was a tweet that was put out after his pro day. Matter of fact, uh, Jordan Schultz from uh, Bleacher Report uh, put the tweet out. Following his pro day, pro day in Seattle today, the Giants are one of the several teams that have a pre-draft visit set up with Washington's quarterback, Michael Penix. Penix is also scheduled to meet with the Broncos, Raiders, Steelers, and Falcons as well. Uh, unknown NFL head coach said today of Penix from his pro day, locked in first rounder. So, I mean, you take it for what it's worth. Uh, apparently, he ran really well. Uh, there was a report that he ran a 4 4 6 40, but then uh, other reports were saying it was a 4 5 6. I had a guy that covers Washington on my radio show, and he said, I didn't have the exact time. I actually had him at a 4 6, but that was based off of me and my phone. So, uh, it sounds like he ran really well. I know he did a vertical jump really high, showed some athleticism, which, of course, has been a question. Is Michael Penix, does he have that athleticism? And it's funny, he actually tweeted out on Wednesday, just because I don't have to run don't mean I can't run and I'm not athletic. The real ones know, LOL. That was from Michael Penix on Twitter on Wednesday. So he showed off some of that athleticism. If you listened earlier in the week, you heard that uh, conversation I had with TJ Hujmanzada, former NFL wide receiver, and he said, hey, the dude is more athletic than people think. They don't want to give him credit for him being athletic. And you know, it's funny. I think about C.J. Stroud when I think about that because C.J. Stroud, that's what the conversation was around him. He's not athletic. He's not athletic. He just stands in the pocket. Well, he ran against Georgia, but that's the only time. And then you see him as rookie year, and he's running around, right? He's making plays when he has to with his feet and with his legs. Uh, but he prefers to stand in the pocket and throw the ball around the yard because, well, he's really good at it. And C.J. Stroud, I remember him telling Vinny Bonsignor at the Combine, uh, not this past year, obviously, but the year before, that, yeah, I stand in the pocket because my wide receivers are working really hard to get open. So why would I just look at one guy and then he's not there and then take off running? Why wouldn't I allow my guys to get open and then hit him with the ball? They're working hard. Why don't I reward them? Michael Penix is doing the same thing. And, look, I'm not saying that he's, you know, uh, Jaden Daniels, like, like he's going to run around the yard like that. He's not. But 
just the athleticism that he showed. I don't know if you saw him actually run the 40. I saw him. He, he looked very good doing it, especially a guy coming off multiple ACL surgeries and that jumping out of the gym pretty much uh, looked pretty fantastic. As far as uh, Drake May went, he looked good too. You know, from all accounts, he was throwing the ball around the yard, had some of the prettiest passes out there. Uh, lots of good stuff coming out of North Carolina's pro day when it comes to Drake May. I didn't get to get a guy on uh, my radio show covering North Carolina's pro day. I'm going to try to do that. Hopefully I can get someone on later on today and give you some more details. Uh, but I did get someone on from Washington, so I have a little bit more details on their pro day. But I'm definitely working on North Carolina's because I want to make sure I get all the details I can on Drake May. Also, Joe Milton from Tennessee, he had his pro day a couple days ago. He's going to be visiting the Raiders on a top 30 visit. So uh, I don't know uh, what they see in him right now, like if they what, what they think about him. He's obviously a guy that would be drafted a little bit later on, but uh, there's no uh, I's that are going undotted and there's no T's that's going uh, uncrossed, right? They're making sure that they check out everything that they've got to check out, do all the you know, the, the, the research they can on all these guys. Again, like I said, they're not just going to settle on one guy and get fixated on him and say, okay, that's it. We're done here. Uh, they're going to go ahead and, like I said, kind of just uh, look at everybody. And so Joe Milton at some point will be visiting with the Raiders on a top 30 visit. But it sounds like Drake May, North Carolina, his uh, pro day went really well. And same thing for Michael Penix and Washington's pro day also. Uh, how about this? Uh, Devontae Adams was on the shop, his little podcast action, you know, a little barbershop type setting. And I thought that this was pretty interesting. I found this on Twitter as well. Uh, it was floating around and he was talking about learning last year and how he continues to learn. And I, I found it to be pretty interesting who he said that he learned from on the Raiders in 2023. Check it out. I learned, I'm learning something new. Like the thing is you can learn in so many different ways. Like I learned from new guys. Like I learned from Jacoby this year, like so much that I didn't I didn't know before. Like wow. not, you shouldn't have let him go. <laughs> I, I was gonna get to that, but I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna say that. I appreciate you though. He was basically like the best kept secret like in the league for me because I've seen a lot of guys. I watch tape of dudes like I watch Richie James tape like guys that people know and respect, but not as far as like Superstars. you know you would think I'd be watching you know Jets all day. Like I love watching his tape, but. You know, I would, I would be watching. I'd be watching the third guy if if I like what he does. So, for me, what like, is like one just, thing Jacoby taught you that you didn't know? It's not really about the teach because he's one of the most quiet human beings I've ever been around. Like some some people get they so quiet to where it's uncomfortable. If he wasn't so cool of a person, it would be there. So he don't he's not gonna be like, hey Tay, like try this or that. But just like certain s small things, like within his routes, he's not the fastest guy in the world. So. He's really good at changing. Like, he can move within his, his routes. Change of pace while he's running full speed is something, probably one of the best that I've seen so far. Like, we got a route called a read it route where you dive in, get back vertical, and then based off the leverage of the guy defending you, you either break it across this way or go across this way. And the way he just set people up, like, you almost just, like, it's like watching basketball. Like, people tell me that all the time, yeah, but I you feel play, like yeah, yeah, he play. looks more like he's playing basketball on the, on the football So you would watch him and then be like, oh, I'm doing that. Hell yeah. So Jacoby Myers, how cool is that? I, I thought that that was really a kind of a cool thing that he's talking about. You know, Jacoby's not a, a loud dude. He's a pretty quiet dude, which he is. We talk to him in the locker room all the time. Really a quiet dude, uh, but he's smart. And he, I, I just keep going back. Even listening to what Devontae Adams was just saying, I go back to what he told Eric Allen and told me and told JT the Brick at the uh, content creator day for the Raiders when Eric Allen asked him, well, you're a wide receiver. I'm a DB. How do you get open? He said, I just do. I just get open. And you hear Devontae just, you know, kind of breaking it down that, you know, Jacoby's not the fastest dude, but he finds a way to get open. I think that that was such a great free agent pickup by the silver and black. And uh, you heard you heard Robert Kraft there as well in the in that little clip that I just played and uh, talking about I should have never left him, let him go. The Patriots messed up in a major way by letting Jacoby Myers out of there. And they replaced him with who? Juju Smith-Schuster? Right. Jacoby Myers was clearly uh, the better option. I'm glad they did. And the Raiders were able to get him because, man, he is a hell of a compliment to Devontae Adams. So uh, I just thought that that was kind of a cool tip of the cap from Devontae saying I'm learning from him. Right. As much as Jacoby says he likes playing with Devontae. Devontae's like, yeah, I'm observant. I'm paying attention to what he's doing because he just he, he does things that make him just oh, OK. I see how he's doing that, and, you know, catches his attention. So I thought that was a nice tip of the cap from one Devontae Adams. So that's what I got for you for 7 over 1 of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. A little news and notes, just a couple little nuggets that I gathered uh, heading into this Friday. Coming up in segment number two, the Raiders are trying to trade up. According to Dan Graziano from ESPN, one of the two teams that he's hearing that are aggressively trying to trade up. You'll hear from him, and then you'll get my thoughts on it following that. That's coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast.
Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor, which is FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, even if your bracket is like mine, completely busted. My bracket is like a stop sign. It is all red. <laughs> my my winner, I had Iowa State winning. They're out of there. I had Arizona get into the Final Four. They're out of there. Now, who knows? Marquette plays today. They were another one of my Final Four teams. Tennessee was my other Final Four team. But I had Iowa State winning the whole thing. So, as you could tell, I am busted and disgusted. I am out of there. But... This is about you. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets, even if your first $5 bet wins. If your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just don't pick Iowa State because, well, they're out of it. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get into the conversation about the Raiders trying to aggressively trade up in the draft to go get their franchise quarterback. And look, this is not me coming up with reports. This is not me coming up with r- rumors. Dan Graziano was on SportsCenter on Wednesday, and he was asked about who he's hearing is trying to trade up, who's hearing trying to get in position to go get their quarterback. Here's what Dan Graziano on SportsCenter on Thursday had to say. The two that you hear most strongly, Christina, are the Minnesota Vikings and the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, those would be big jumps for both of those teams, and it could really depend on what happens at the very top. If we assume Caleb Williams goes first to the Bears, then what does Washington do? If Washington takes Jaden Daniels, that might make the Vikings or the Raiders less motivated to go up if Daniels is the guy they like over Drake May. If Washington takes May and the Vikings and Raiders both want Daniels, all of a sudden that Patriots pick at number three becomes very valuable. Remember, the Vikings have already acquired a second first round pick in a trade a couple weeks ago with Houston. So that gives them extra ammunition to move up if they want to. And the Raiders, they know Jaden Daniels. Antonio Pierce, their head coach, was on Herm Edwards' Arizona State coaching staff when Daniels began his college career at Arizona State. So those are two teams that have the motivation and the means to move up if they want. So there you go. You hear Graz right there talking about the Raiders, and you hear him talking about the Vikings. Obviously, the Vikings, we've talked about them quite a bit here on the show, especially after they went and selected and got that number 23 overall pick from the Houston Texans, that first round pick. They're obviously going to try to package that 11th pick and the 23rd pick, and then probably another first round pick in 2025 and be able to move up to the top three, top four. So with that being said, and it's funny, Mike T, I played some Mike T sound on Thursday's show as well as I was on that pre-draft uh, conference call with him. And I asked him about moving up from 13 to two. And he basically said, hey, the Raiders got to get on the phone and stay on the phone because Minnesota, again, uh, has that that 23rd overall pick they just acquired from the Houston Texans. If you didn't get to hear uh, Thursday's show, here's what Mike T had to say when I asked him about moving up from 13 to two for the Raiders to go up and potentially get Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I think to be candid, uh, I think that's going to be really hard to do. Uh, you know, you got Minnesota with the two ones there. I, like the way to do that, to be candid, I made some trades like this is basically what you have to say is like, first of all, you got to hope that Washington wants to trade out or, you know, in your scenario, let's say Washington takes straight Maine, New England Strat, you just can't get them off the phone because you don't have as much ammo as a team like Minnesota. And basically you're saying, hey, we're not negotiating here. We're paying the bill. Tell me what the bill is. And that's going to be you know, three first round picks, which is, you know, you could do three, you could trade three years in advance. So it would be three number ones. And then, you know, they may look at the roster and say, Hey, we want another really good young player. Um, and, and, and really go from there. And, you know, candidly, like who would that be? Like it may be Devontae Adams. It may, it may not be. So, but if I'm the Raiders and I want to go all the way up, it's going to take at least three first round picks, especially, competing against Minnesota this year. So there's Mike T. You heard Dan Graziano. And I think that the Raiders need to do it sooner rather than later. On my radio show on Thursday, someone called in and asked, well, Q, do you think that they're going to wait until draft day to make a trade? Or do you think that they'll try to do it ahead of time? And I think that they need to do it ahead of time. And I don't think that they need to get to number three. If you get to number three and you're the Raiders, and it's, it's a big if, right? There's no guarantees that they can move up at all, right? Because you have to have a trade partner. Like, you can want a lot. I want a lot in life and doesn't mean I'm going to get it just because I want it, right? The Raiders could want to move up, and there's no doubt about it that they want to, right? There's no doubt about it that Antonio Pierce wants Jaden Daniels to be the, quarter of the, silver, the, the quarterback of the silver and black. There, that's a no-brainer, right? We all know that. But again, just because they want to doesn't mean it's going to happen. So my answer and my response to, you know, what are they going to do? Are they going to wait till draft day? Or are they going to do it right away? I think that they have to do it right away. 
I really do, because if you wait until draft day, this is multiple scenarios could play out. One, the price is going to go, it's going to skyrocket, right? If all of a sudden the Bears pick, you know, Caleb Williams at number one, and then Washington's on the clock, and then the Raiders are picking up the phone and calling, and then Minnesota's picking up the phone calling, all of a sudden, now you know, okay, these teams definitely want this draft pick. Okay, not only is it three first-round picks, but now it's two twos and, you know, a, another three or, or something. Like, all of a sudden, because it's the last minute, you only have so much time, so you don't have time to dance around. Kind of like what Mike T said, okay, I'm not even going to negotiate. I'm just going to pay the price. I'm just here to pay the, the cost, whatever that is. And I don't think that that's a good way to go because the Vikings have more to offer right now that the, that the Raiders don't have. They, they have two first-round picks in, uh, in 2024, which is better than the Raiders' number 13 overall in 2024. You can get two first-round picks and then some. You're, you're, you're going to do that more times than not. So I think that the Raiders, if they can do it, if they find a way to get up there and get in that conversation, they've got to do it sooner rather than later so they already know, all right, we've got this. We've got this locked in. We're good to go. Not to mention, you don't want to trade to number three. And I've been saying this since the combine. You got to trade to number two. If you wait and you get to number three, there's a chance that your number, your, your guy is not there, right? There's a great chance that Jaden Daniels is gone uh, at, at two, right? And, and look, I know there's people talking about him gone at number one. I think that Caleb Williams uh, is going to still go number one overall. I don't see, I just don't see Jaden Daniels jumping him for the number one quarterback. I mean, I guess, I guess there's a chance of that. And if that were to happen and the Raiders are sitting there at number two, then I guess they'd have to take Caleb Williams. I think that'd be the next best option. But there's no doubt about it that they want to get Jaden Daniels. I just think that they've got to solidify their spot now. You can't, and I had a, a guy, uh, Raider 66, call in my radio show and say, uh, yeah, I'd be disappointed if the Raiders traded up, gave up the farm to get to number three and still didn't get their guy. Like that. That's why number three can't be the target. Again, I, I did a whole show on the podcast at the Combine when, uh, you know, when I was told, Q, if the Raiders want Jaden Daniels, they got to get to number two. I, I've been saying that ever since I was told that at the Combine by someone that I really believe in, someone that I know knows his stuff, right, and, and is not going to just, you know, throw something against the wall and hope that it sticks. So as soon as he told me that, I've been, ever, I've been stuck on that number two, and there's no, there's no slowing that down now, right? That train is not slowing down anytime soon. I believe that, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels will be the number two quarterback taken, whether that's by – Chicago, whether that's by Washington, whether it's by the Raiders, whether it's by Minnesota, like whoever is in that number two spot that wants a quarterback, I think they'll take Jaden Daniels. I, I think it'll go Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and then probably Drake May. I know this conversation about J.J. McCarthy possibly going number two. I just don't see it. I could be wrong. I'm not a draft guru. I'm not a draft expert. I'm not an insider. But gut feeling, which is what I always go off of, tells me J.J. McCarthy is not going to go number two. So, you know, I know that Dan Graziano, you heard him say that, uh, you know, things could change for the Vikings and the Raiders if uh, their guy doesn't happen to be there when they go to select. But, again, I don't think the Raiders could take that chance. If they are truly 100% in on going and getting their guy, and I do believe from a lot of different conversations I've had, I do believe that they're very aggressive uh, trying to go get their guy. I don't know if you saw uh, Devontae Adams on Instagram. It was kind of floating around on Twitter as well. Uh, where he had a, uh, you know, part of his story was Jaden Daniels saying, uh, my resume is on the grass. My resume is already out there, right? And it's funny because that's the same, that's the same line that, that uh, you know, Antonio Pierce said when he was trying to get the job. Well, my, my resume is out there on the grass. <laughs> my resume is on the field. And now Jaden Daniels said the same thing. My resume is on the grass uh, when he was talking to, uh, you know, talking to Cameron Wolf about, you know, why he's the best, the best quarterback in this draft. So, uh, I, I know that they're aggressively trying to get him. Like, I know that for a fact. Again, doesn't guarantee that they're going to. But for my money, they need to be able to find a way to make a trade, if they're going to make a trade, before the draft. They cannot wait till April 25th. I think if they wait till April 25th, it's just going to be way too much. The tax is going to be high, right? It's almost like, you know, when you, uh, when, when you go into a store and you have to buy something instead of buying it online, uh, they might just give you, like, a service charge. If they wait till that <laughs> the day of the draft, there could be a service charge that goes along with you know, the price of making that trade. So I, I just, I, again, my gut feeling tells me if they're going to do it, it has to be done sooner rather than later. So there's no questions asked. So a team like Minnesota can't get in there and, you know, kind of get wiggle some, you know, elbow room and, 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 and push them out, squeeze them out of the position that they want to be in. But right there, it's not me. You heard Dan Graziano say the two teams that are really aggressively trying to move up the draft board and get in their position are the Vikings 
and the Raiders. So we'll see what happens. Every day is a, another interesting day. I'm still waiting to see some kind of big report from Schefter or Rap Sheet or one of those that says, oh, we have a trade. Trades can happen at any given time. That's what I got for you for segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. What's on your mind? 707-654-4693. Your calls and texts come up next in segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with Raider Eddie in Denver. He's calling to talk about J.J. McCarthy and give me his thoughts on him, what he thinks. Here he is, Raider Eddie in Denver. Hey, Q. What's up? This is Raider Eddie in Denver. Hey, I just want to chime in on J.J. McCarthy. I know it sounds like you're coming around on McCarthy, uh, and what I mean by that, it sounds like you are starting to – kind of value him a little bit more and understand where um, a lot of draft gurus sort of value him at. Um, but I do hear you You are still saying this phrase, we don't know what we don't know about him. And I, I don't, I don't, uh, I understand where, what you're talking about, but just because he hasn't put up four or 5,000 yards, that doesn't mean we don't know about him. Um, we do know his tape. We do know he's very mobile. Um, he can create. Um, he can improvise while on the run. He can hit targets. He's really good at taking what's there, like hitting a guy in the flat, hitting him early with a pass, an accurate pass. We know he has great size, very athletic, really fast. I think he ran a 4.6 in the 40. Um, he's very young at 21. So I, I just hope you're kind of coming along a little bit. And uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get him. I mean, if we can get up, we'd have to get up to probably pick four or five to have a chance. But um, it does sound like you're coming around on J.J. McCarthy. And it also sounds like you're hearing about the real risk with Penix. And the fact that Penix is not a guy that is really great on the run and hitting targets down the field. He ran for eight yards last season, Q. He's, he's not, he's great in the pocket. He's great if you keep him clean. Great arm, big hands, can spin it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But, but Q, he can't create. He can't improvise. He cannot run. Period. Eight yards running last season. I, I still have people trying to say he can run. He can't run. Eight yards at last season. And he also cannot take a hit. If you watch his tape, he will slide. He'll throw the ball away. He'll even throw the ball up for grabs. He will not take a hit because he can't. Physically, he cannot take a hit. Um, anyway, Q, love your show. I'm happy to disagree and uh, listen to the conversation. Thanks. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And it's not that I don't want to give JJ credit and not that I'm coming around on him like too much. I just, again, I don't know if I would pound the table for a guy that I'm just not 100% sure about. And what I mean by that is I don't know who he is consistently. One of the things that has always stood out to me that a coach said to me one time is, Q, I don't care who a guy is once in a while. I care who he is consistently. Like on a scale of 1 to 10, if he's consistently a 7, I could take that and understand that. Okay, cool, he's consistently a 7. This is what I'm going to get. But you don't want a guy that's a 10 and then a 4 and then a 7 and then a 3 and then a 9 and then a 2. Like you don't want a guy that's all over the place like that. Who is he consistently? And that's the answer that I don't have when it comes to J.J. McCarthy. If you go back and look at what he did in 2023, he had seven games where he threw for 160 yards or less. He also had seven games where he threw for 280 yards or less. And, and I mean in the 200 range. And then he had a game where he threw for 335 against Purdue. Like, who is he consistently? Is he the 280 or less guy? Where he's still in the 200s? Is he the 160 or less? He had one game where he threw for 60 yards. You know what I mean? Like, who is he? Again, I'm not trying to discredit him. I know that he won a lot of games. I know that they went on an amazing run. In his career there at Michigan, he has an amazing winning percentage. He's a national champion. Winning matters. Absolutely, 100%. 
I just don't know who he is consistently. And I'm not going to pound the table for a guy that I can't tell you who he is consistently, who I think he is consistently. That's just me. As far as Penix, I like him a lot. I think he's more athletic than you're giving him credit for. I think he's a lot more athletic than a lot of people are giving him credit for. He used to run a lot at Indiana. If you go back, he didn't run a lot at Washington because he didn't have to. Right? He had an amazing offensive line. Now, he's not going to get that every team he goes to in the league. I get that. But the dude's got a heck of an arm. He's very accurate. And I kind of look at him like C.J. Stroud. Just because he didn't show a whole lot of it doesn't mean that he can't do it. As he said, the real ones know. And I'm not saying I'm the real one, like I'm close to him or something. But he, he, he knows what the knock on him is. And I think he showed a lot of it at his pro day by running a heck of a 40 on Thursday and also doing a, a heck of a, a, you know, a, a vertical jump. Again, it's the guy that had multiple ACL surgeries. So uh, I think that he's more athletic than a lot of people are giving him credit for. But Raider Eddie, thanks for the call. I do appreciate you. Up next, I got a text from Raider Ang. It says, hey, Q, what do you think about this? This is what I'd like to do. I'd like to get the top right tackle or cornerback, Alpha, at 13, then offer the 14th pick, Saints, the 44th, 77th, and 112th, which is the second, third, and fourth round picks for trade. It'll be worth it to have Fuaga and Penix, baby. Who cares about the rest of the picks? So there you go. You want... Uh, a top right tackle in Fuaga, and then uh, the Penix. So there you go. Okay, so you want Michael Penix, and you want a guy uh, to protect his blind side. And that's the big thing, man. If you get Michael Penix, you've got to make sure that that right side of the offensive line is solidified because that is his blind side, un, you know, unlike a normal quarterback, a right-handed quarterback, where the blind side would be the left side. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's something that's got to be taken care of. And, you know, Penix is a guy that – it's so intriguing to me. I don't know if he's going to go 13. I don't know if he's going to go later in round one. I don't know if he's going to drop to round two. I just don't know where he's going to go. I don't know what the true evaluation is on him. I just know he has a heck of an arm. If he has a really good run game, which he did not have in the national championship game, that's part of the reason why Michigan you know, beat the brakes off of him. He wasn't able to do anything because Dylan Johnson was really banged up with that high ankle sprain. He still, even at his pro day on Thursday, still wasn't 100%. He said he was about 75%. Still wasn't 100%. So you know, that high ankle sprain was bad for Dylan Johnson, and that was a big part of the reason why Washington didn't have their full arsenal when it came to their offense in the national championship game. But thanks so much for the text. I do appreciate you. Next up is a call from Raider Mack in San Antonio. He's calling to talk about Michael Penix and his blind side while he also talks about some tackles as well. Here he is, Raider Mack in San Antonio. Thank you, Raider Nation. This is Raider Mack out of San Antonio. They just got done listening to the Thursday episode of the podcast where um, – you were talking with Mike Tannenbaum uh, about uh, Michael Penix as well as trying to find a good uh, right tackle for his blind side, not to be contrarian, but Michael Penix is left-handed. His blind side is going to be uh, Colton Miller. So luckily, uh, you know, finding a right tackle, um, you know, it's going to be a strong side. Uh, man, the more I look at the tackle prospects, what a pipe dream would it be to, to see someone like a Joe Alt um, fall to us or, you know, even if we move up a little bit to snag him. I'm, like, just playing in my head. If we get a Joe Alt, what happens to Colton? Does Colton become the right tackle? Does Joe Alt stay the left tackle? Uh, you're, you're saying Telesco loves the, um, you know, to, to build the trenches and – uh Man, what would that look like to get Joe Alt and then maybe Penix falls to us in the second? Uh, just the, the possibilities, man. Can't wait for the draft. Love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, just win big. Mac, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate you. And, yes, Michael Penix is a lefty. The blind side is the right side. <laughs> so I'm not too sure what you're talking about, Colton Miller. Colton Miller is the left tackle. Uh, the – the, the, the blind side is the side that the quarterback can't see. Uh, that's why it's called the blind side, right? So when Michael Penix drops back to pass as a lefty, his back is to the right tackle. So it's the right tackle is the blind side. So I was correct about that. But you're not wrong in saying that you need to get a big-time offensive tackle. The right side needs to be addressed. You know who's going to be left to center. you got Colton Miller. You've got Dylan Parham. You've got Andre James. Who's going to be your guys at the right guard spot? Who's going to be the guys at the right tackle spot? That has got to be solidified. There's no doubt about that. So uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't see the Raiders trading up for a tackle. I think if they trade up for anything, it'll be a quarterback like we talked about in segment number two. Thanks for the call, Raider Mac. I appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Nick in Buena Park. It says, hey, Q, 
Is Joe Milton the next Jamarcus Russell? <laughs> we should draft him just to relive the nightmare. LOL, just kidding. Thanks for the great show and coverage of our Raiders. Also, would you suggest, suggest that there may be at least two different categories or of running quarterbacks? One, the Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson types that are maybe more predictable than, than the will, and, and then will run first, especially if they get in trouble. And then two, Steve Young, John Elway, Patrick Mahomes types who we know can run at any time, but we never know when they're going to run. Even when they're in trouble, they can fool you. If you do think there's a difference, which would you prefer? Where would Jaden Daniels and others in this draft fit in? Thanks again for your time. That's Nick from Buena Park. And look, there's no doubt there's levels to the game. And thanks for the text. I appreciate you. There's different levels to the game as far as a quarterback that can get out of trouble. And that's all I'm looking for. That's what I've been pounding the table for. I'm not necessarily saying that you've got to have a guy that is Lamar Jackson. Like, like I'll say that Jaden Daniels has legs like Lamar Jackson. There's no doubt. You know, the, the Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson. I think that Jaden Daniels has a much better arm than Lamar Jackson has. And that's not me sliding Lamar Jackson. I just think Jaden Daniels is that much better with his arm than Lamar Jackson. You know, and then there's other guys, as you mentioned, like the Steve Youngs, the Patrick Mahomes, the John Elways. Patrick Mahomes is a guy who wants to throw the ball around the yard, but he has no problem running if he has to, right? I mean, because he, he knows what it takes to keep plays alive. He can do that. But then there's other levels to it as well. You know, I mean, you look at some of these quarterbacks in the upcoming draft, like, you know, like a, a Bo Nix and a J.J. McCarthy. I mean, they, they can get out of there. They can, they can do what they, they need to do, you know, as far as picking up yards with their feet. They can do that. And even other, even Gardner Minshew to a certain degree. I mean, not really, but he, he's, he's mobile enough to, you know, back up Jalen Hurts. He was mobile enough to back up Anthony Richardson. He was mobile enough to back up like Trevor Lawrence, right? I mean, there's, there's different levels to it. I mean, being a mobile guy, being able to use your, your, your legs and having the willingness to use your legs comes in many different shapes and sizes. Jaden Daniels is an extreme, right? He's an extreme weapon. He can run, he can throw, you know, the only thing he's got to do is be careful with taking hits, right? Because he took a lot of hits at LSU that'll get knocked out the league. You can't do that, but there's, there's, you know, just different, different levels to it. You know, even like I was talking about Michael Penix, he's more athletic than people give him credit for, you know, and, and even like, think about Derek Carr. Derek Carr used to run until he broke his ankle. Once he stopped, once he broke his ankle, that really stopped. But if you remember going back to his rookie year and his, his first couple of years in the league, he didn't mind taking off with his, with his feet. You know, he, he, he was willing to do that. And then after he broke his ankle, it was a wrap. There was no more that he was doing of that. So it's just, there's different levels to it. I just want a guy that's willing to get up out of there. A guy that has to, you know, if there's, if there's four, five, six, seven yards, even Rich Gannon, remember what Rich Gannon used to do? You know, he'd see open grass and go pick it up. That's just, just, you gotta have, you gotta have that. You know, you just can't have a guy that's, that's anchored into the ground there. You just can't, in my opinion, uh, especially now in 2024, uh, you just gotta have a guy willing and able to make a few moves here and there. Uh, thanks for the text, my man. I do appreciate you up next. And I got time for a couple more Raider guru in Vegas. He's calling to tell me what the Raiders will and will not do. He's got the whole thing figured out. Here he is Raider guru out of Vegas. Hey Q, this is Raider guru in Las Vegas. I just want to let you know that the Raiders are not going to trade up. The Raiders do not want Jaden Daniels, and they do not want a mobile offense. If they wanted a mobile offense, they would have got Justin Fields to back up Jaden Daniels if that's what they're going to try to do. They didn't do that because that's not the way of the offense right now. The way of the offense is someone with a strong arm who wants to do as much as they can in the pocket as far as going on time with the routes and the way the offense is brought up. They don't want a free silence. They don't want someone on their legs and all the way down the field. If they gave us Jaden Daniels right now, we wouldn't take him because that's not where the offense wants to go, and it wouldn't be a good place for him. But everybody really wants to see him here. It's not going to happen. And also, it's probably going to be a boring draft. We're going to get the you know, offensive linemen. I think we're going to go O-line, O-line, DB. So, I just think, and then maybe if uh, Pace is available, we'll go for him in the, with our fourth pick. Maybe our third pick will hit a quarterback, but we're not trading up. We're not taking a quarterback at 13. We're not taking a quarterback at 44. And we are basically just going to wait to see who falls to us when we're looking for a rookie. So that's what I see uh, as far as reality goes. 
Anyway, go Raiders. Okay, so no trade up, no Daniels, no mobile offense, boring draft, O line, O line, cornerback. And if Jaden Daniels was available to the Raiders, the Raiders wouldn't take him. So, <laughs> Raider guru in Vegas, uh, those are your words, not mine. You have a lot of everything figured out, you got a lot of facts. I should have hit you up a long time ago, man. I don't know what I've been playing around with all this conversation for if uh, you've got it all solved from the be- from the get-go. What I need now, I need you to give me the Powerball numbers because I know it's close to a billion dollars. So since you've got it all figured out, let me get the, uh, the, the Powerball numbers. Also, since you're in Vegas, can you meet me at GVR? Let me know when the triple-double diamond machine is going to hit so I don't waste money putting it in. Tell me, all right, it's going to hit now. Then I'll go for there. I mean, you know, a matter of fact, why stop there? Uh, remember the old school show, Press Your Luck, where is the whammies? You know, stop, 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 boom, no whammy. You know that, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Man, tell me when to stop so I don't, uh, you know, not like E-40 says, tell me when to go, tell me when to stop so I don't hit a whammy, man. So I should just keep you on speed dial. You got all the answers, brother. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't even know how to respond to, to that call. There was a whole lot of, as a matter of fact, and, and um, yeah, hey, maybe you got all the answers, man. Maybe you, uh, you hold the keys to the castle. I don't know. I, I don't have it. So uh, at some point, I'll work my way up to uh, where you're at, but I'm not there yet. So uh, appreciate the call, brother. Uh, it's all good. Hopefully, i uh, talk to you soon. Uh, up next, we'll close it out with this. We got a text from Jason, a.k.a. Dane Raider 1. He says, hey, Q, my name is Jason, but I go by Dane Raider 1 on Twitter. We met at the Chiefs game at Allegiant Stadium. Anyways, first-time contributor. I know we need a quarterback to build off of. I know this. But what if we pass on trading three first-round picks to move up? What if instead we move back and pick, pick up an extra first next year? I think it could make a top quarterback more likely next year without selling the farm. Now, we may have to trade into the late first for something like that, but in a deep draft, there could be worse time to get uh, to go best player available. Loaded at cornerback and offensive line, I think that we could find a player to fill a need. Just a thought. Love the show on YouTube, sir. Congratulations. Uh, that's Jason, again, a.k.a. Dane Raider 1 on Twitter. Thanks for the text. I appreciate it. And the thing about that is you got to have someone that wants to trade up. Right, You could talk about trading back all you want, just like we could talk about the Raiders trading up to number two all we want. you got to have someone that's a partner. And I don't know if the Raiders trade back from 13 to, what, 25, 26? I'm not, I'm not sure how far you want to go back. Uh, that's going to get an extra first-round pick. You might get an extra second-round pick here and there. I mean, you, there's a chart right? that's kind of the value chart. So I'm not too sure how far they'd have to go back to get an extra first. But I don't, I don't, I don't know, you know why you'd wait to get a quarterback if you can get one now. Just go get it now. I understand – you don't want to give up too many first round picks and maybe wait till next year. But again, that relationship that that AP has with Jaden Daniels is is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to 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 you know do something and potentially do something special. I trust what this you know scouting team is looking at. I trust what Tom Telesco is doing. I trust what AP is looking at and what he wants. And I know what he wants for sure is Jaden Daniels. Again, don't know if the Raiders are going to get him. Not sure, but know that that's who they want to get. Just like TJ Hujmanzada said the other day. Okay. If they can get who they want, oh, we know who he wants. Okay, well, since you know that, if, if they can get him, great. If they can't, then they should go and get Michael Penix. I just think that the Raiders will definitely come out of this draft with a quarterback. Again, that's just my opinion, but that's what I think. But, Jason, thanks so much for the text. I do appreciate you, and that's going to do it for today's show. That's going to do it for the week. All right, so, uh, you know, we're going to head into the weekend. Uh, it's Easter weekend. We'll have fun. Uh, everyone enjoy their family. Enjoy Easter. Uh, do what you do. Uh, today I'm, I'm not doing my uh, ESPN show at night. I'll actually be on Carlin versus Joe, so I'm going to do a little early action. Matter of fact, it's really early. What, 9 a.m. Pacific time? <laughs> I'll be on 9 to noon, and then, of course, Radio Nation Radio, 920 from 2 to uh, 5 p.m. or 2 to 4 p.m. because there's a basketball game. So, yeah, a whole day of radio for me. Uh, and Raider Nation, uh, hopefully you're having a really good day as well, depending on what time you're uh, actually listening to this. And you head into the weekend and, and have a great weekend. So uh, we'll be back on Monday for sure. Uh, we'll see what the weekend brings, what news and notes come out of it. But you know we'll be here talking about it. We'll get more calls and texts and plenty of conversation as we do on the daily here on the Locked On Raiders podcast. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, Just win, baby.